Uh, yeah, so uh, concluding our postdoc talk, well done, you should have your last post, tell us about how great you are. Yeah, thank you. I, I guess as a last speaker, I should thank the organizers for organizing this wonderful lectures and uh, for the opportunity given me to present my work. And uh, so the talk is going to be about uh, von Craig duality. And uh, before I go into it, let me first just, does it work? Uh, no, works. Uh, mention some other things uh, I like to think about. And like if anybody is interested, I'm always happy to talk about it. Okay, now let me start with the classical story. So just the usual uh, classical von Craig duality. So if you have any topological space, you can associate singular cohomology group with, with coefficients in any field. Okay, and then, uh, well, I mean, this cohomology group is supposed to measure some global topological properties of this space X. And in general, I mean, we don't, we don't have any good control over this because X is a, an arbitrary topological space. And then the question is that, like, can you find a class of uh, spaces where we can say something about these cohomology groups or well, otherwise use these cohomology groups to study the topology of this space in a useful way? And so, what will be important? For the first part of the talk, it's a case of complex manifolds. And it's a question of whether we can say anything useful about these spaces and these groups. And of course, we can say a lot of useful things, but I think I want to concentrate for now is upon uh, Craig duality. So it says that uh, if you have a smooth, compact, uh, complex manifold of dimension D, and here by D, I mean complex dimension. So then there is a duality between HI and H2D minus I. Uh, and this result is uh, uh, quite, quite strong in two ways. Uh, first of all, what interesting in two ways. The first one is that because it doesn't have make any, we don't have any assumptions on X. So it's like any smooth and compact manifold, complex manifold. And the second thing is that uh, at least one of the assumptions that you put smooth, it's a local condition and uh, the result is global. So we get some like global knowledge of your, uh, of topology on X from some uh, local data. And let me give some direct consequences of this fact. Uh, so first of all is that, of course, if you have duality, you have just equality of dimensions. Uh, the second application is that the vanishing result is that if I is uh, um, bigger than twice the dimensions, then HI is dual to H2D minus I, and this number is negative, so this cohomology group is zero. And the last, and the last uh, uh, direct consequence that I want to mention is that if FX connected, then we have, uh, we know the top cohomology group directly, it's uh, dual to H0, and H0 is always just like one dimensional vector space, so it's uh, vector space, okay? And this is uh, like interesting for two reasons. So first of all is that, that it's non-zero, it's already a, a not trivial pack because like, for example, if X is not compact, this group is just zero. And the second is that it's exactly one dimensional. And in some sense, uh, this is the exact content of one great quality. But uh, let me mention it at least as a consequence. Even though, like, it says, stronger statements that this is somehow uh, the main part. Okay. And now, uh, with being said, uh, um, I want to discuss some other situations. And for the, for the rest of the talk, uh, a lot of my talk will be about other context when you can prove a similar result by changing some words in this formulation. Uh, okay, so the next context that I want to, dis uh, to discuss is the algebraic world. Oops. So here we fix an algebraically closed field K, an algebraic variety over K, and uh, a prime number L, which is different from characteristics. So for example, if you are in characteristic zero, you can allow any prime number. And then uh, there is a theory of the homology groups, which is associated with FL vector space to Spain. Such variety. And then again, there is a theorem uh, which is essentially the same. We just need to change compact by proper, which is like essentially like axiomatization of compactness in the algebraic situation. You need to change com complex manifold by a variety over K. Uh, and then you have exactly the same result, but uh, you have a tall homology yeah. instead of singular homology groups. And in particular, it gives you the, the same consequences as, as in topology that. Uh, tau cohomology groups are concentrated in degrees from zero to twice the dimension. The top cohomology group is uh, one dimensional if X is connected, and you have a quality of like uh, better numbers of like dimensions of cohomology groups. But also, like an algebraic situation is 
slightly more interesting because you can apply it with different fields. In particular, we can, do, we can try to leverage this information in arithmetic. And so one of the consequences is the functional equation, the beta function of rise over a few. Uh, but that's just one way how it can be applied. And uh, uh, the main part of my talk will be about the third, the, the third world, so-called the periodic world. So let me now uh, explain the setup. So now we enter the periodic world, non archimedean world. So fix a prime number P and consider the, uh, the field of periodic numbers. So it's a completion of P with respect to the periodic norm. And then we can take, then we want, like it's easier to work on algebraically closed fields. So like we need to construct some algebraically closed fields. Yeah? The first step is to take algebraic closure of QP, but then it's not complete. So this hat means completion, and then it's not theorem, like it's a theorem that this field is actually algebraically closed. And this is analog of an, an analog of the field complex numbers in the periodic world. And then there is a notion of rigid analytical variety developed by many people. I guess if I want to mention them, like Tate, Huber, Berkovich, uh, Reno, maybe some other people. But what it's supposed to capture is the notion of uh, analytic manifold over uh, periodic numbers instead of uh, complex numbers. And then in particular, you can also associate the talc homology groups to such spaces. This is also like a meaningful uh, notion. It is again a, an FL vector space. Uh, so we can ask, oops, uh, yeah. So what about concrete duality or other, other properties of these groups? And uh, uh, so classical work, or well, now classical work of Huber and Berkovich tells us that, like, in some cases, everything is as good as an algebraic situation. Uh, so it's somehow slow. Yeah. Um, so as long as L is not equal to P, uh, then you have concrete duality, and actually, like, you have almost everything you want. And but now let me just emphasize that the field TP itself is of characteristic zero. But we still have the assumption that L is not equal to P. So, like we expect, since CP is a characteristic zero, we expect to have a good tau homology theory with respect to any prime number. But it turns out that the, the theory works well, or at least as a street and works well. It's for L equals P, it's a meaningful notion, but like they didn't prove much in this case. And then the last question uh, is like, what happens if L equals P? Uh, can we say anything useful? And like, first of all, does it hold? And second, they're like, why the proof, proofs don't work? So the reason the proofs don't work is that because the standard building block breaks down. Is that like, if you take unit disk and take it at all homologies then this group is non-zero. So many of these arguments, they are local, they somehow reduce to a relative disk and then do some, some, some calculations, but these calculations break down in, in, in the, Close unit disk, and actually, it's not group not just it, it's group not just zero, it's like actually quite huge. It's essentially the same cardinality as CP, particularly depends on the ground field. Uh, well, and then, uh, okay, I don't know the history that well, but my impression was that before very recent, people didn't really study it much because somehow it behaves very wildly. And I think that things changed when with the invention of perfect toy spaces, where one of the First positive results in this direction was a theorem of Schultz, uh, well, like intermediate step in his paper, where he showed that if X is proper, then these groups are still finite. So at least it makes the FP, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, FP. Yeah. Uh, so locally, they are infinite in this periodic world, but globally, they still find it. Uh, and so then, uh, so the local analog of Poincare duality doesn't make sense because groups are just infinite and there is no chance to have a perfect pattern, but still, since this uh, space is a proper, uh, uh, like, Schultz asked the question, like, if there is concrete duality for PID coefficients and proper spaces, proper small spaces over CP. And the answer is yes. Uh, so this is a result of my thesis following the strategy announced by Gabor, uh, that uh, if you have a smooth proper rigid variety over CP, or like any non intermediate periodic field, uh, then there is the same concrete duality result. And, uh, uh, okay, I have a couple of minutes. So let me uh, say a little bit more about it. So the first thing I want to say is that uh, the, 
the proof is a little bit strange and uh, somehow it uses things that it, it, it proves more, but somehow it uses things that are pretty difficult, or I mean, at least that are not usually not used in, uh, in Poincare duologies, like Gadi-Hosh theory and the strategy is to reduce it to some coherent duality using Gadi-Hosh theory. And then for, so this was uh, uh, the result of my thesis, thesis, and then last year I was thinking that like somehow uh, if there is actually a way to avoid all this uh, machinery and give more some sort of geometric proof and uh, it turns out that uh, the result or at least supposed to be yes it's not written down so maybe there are some issues but it uh, seems positive is that uh, so first of all uh, so this is joint work with Shijan Tian and Emmanuel Reineke is that we try to give somehow to do a new proof of concrete duality in particular in the previous context so in the Lady case it turns out that there is an almost formal proof of concrete duality. Uh, and the essential things that you need to use is uh, like existence of churn classes and uh, and QNOS formula. But, and uh, so somehow if you, like in good cases where you have full theory, the proof can be formalized to a large extent. And in the PID case, it's not possible, but it can give a, diff a new proof which is more geometric and like it uses a little bit of the idea for theory, but very mildly. And uh, okay, as the last slide is kind of like a troll slide that uh, here is a proof of concrete on the <laughs> Okay, that's uh, <laughs> So you have no analog of something involving non-compact space and commonly with compact support and ordinary model. You, you do have this, but you don't have proper base change. So does this duality come from the cup product? Yes. So by linear form and cup product being, being non-singular. Right. So you can define trace map and then this valid is exactly a cup product and then this trace map. So if you had a rigid space, which was not proper, but it was the complement of an analytic subset in something proper, do you have finiteness for? Right, if it's a, a complement of the risky closed subset, then uh, you have finiteness. Okay. And you also have duality with compact. I mean, if you change one by compact, it's for more. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>